Oshkosh Media is. Government programming on GovTV, community programming on Life TV, and community radio on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Welcome to the City Manager's Report. A look at city updates and a preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. And thanks for joining us for this edition of the City Manager's Report. I'm Andy Raddick, and in a moment we'll be joined by our City Manager, Mark Roloff. In the first half of today's show, we'll have some municipal news updates, including information from city departments. And in the second half, we'll highlight some items from the upcoming Tuesday, August 27th, Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. And with that, we bring in our City Manager, Mark Roloff. Mark, thanks for joining us today. Great to be here, Andy. All right. Well, we have a lot to discuss today, and uh, uh, we wanted to start off just talking a little bit about uh, an, an announcement that you had made recently. And uh, just to recap, uh, um, your uh, uh, where you can say it, Andy. My plans to retire. Your plans to retire. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, d I didn't purposely miss the show. I was planning a vacation. So, uh, yeah, I made the announcement to council uh, uh, at the end of July that yeah, I've been working in local government for 41 years, mm -hmm. the last 16 here in Oshkosh. And, you know, for, for a variety of reasons, a lot of personal reasons, but, you know, I, I turned 65 next year. It just seemed to be the right time. Mm -hmm. I think it's the right time for our organization uh, and gives the opportunity for council to, to start looking to the future about what they want to accomplish and finding somebody to help lead them uh, into the next phase of, of uh, progress for the city of Oshkosh, which I think is very exciting and, and I, I will miss it. But at the same time, it's, it's a great opportunity for Oshkosh to uh, select a new leader and, and keep the progress going. Absolutely. And, uh, and we thank you for everything that you've uh, contributed to Oshkosh in, in your, your tenure here, for sure. Um, we also just wanted to, just a quick reminder for folks, you know, you have the uh, city manager role here. And just a, a little explainer about how that all works in the mechanics of local government here. Yeah, well, a lot of people don't understand or realize that uh, the council manager form, as it's commonly known, is the most common form of local government management for cities over 25,000 in the entire country. Mm. Uh, you know, there's a lot of examples. Well, it's not used as much in Wisconsin. There's a lot of reasons for that, but professional management is very prevalent uh, throughout the country. And what it says is that trying to run uh, the city uh, like a board of trustees, uh, which is our council uh, hired or selected by their shareholders, in our case, the voters, and then the, the board of directors, the council, hires uh, a CEO, or the, in our case, the city manager, to run the, the operations of the city. Uh, I take direction from the council. I certainly, like a CEO, make recommendations to council and talk to them about vision, but everything that we've done with strategic planning is to get the council to reach a consensus mm -hmm. so that I can carry out what the consensus of council is. Mm -hmm. And that's, in essence, what my job is. And so finding somebody with who's professionally trained in local government that can carry out uh, what the council wants to get done. Uh, and the council, because they represent the people, they come for, from a variety of walks of life. Mm -hmm. And that perspective is provided to the city manager so that, that I can, as city manager, carry out their policies that they want to see. Mm -hmm. So I work very closely with them to make sure we get the vision straight uh, so that so that I can carry it out uh, according to their wishes. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that makes sense. You know, as far as uh, uh, where we're at in this process, uh, uh, what what do we do next then at this point? Well, I can only tell you as an observer, yes. but you know, from experience as well, but uh, I don't play a role in that process. Mm -hmm. This, the council's, one of the council's primary jobs is to select the city manager. So this is entirely up to council. And they're the ones setting the path for the future, and so it's entirely appropriate. This isn't me uh, appointing or anointing or any of that sort. The council has hired a recruiting firm that has extensive experience in doing recruitment for local government managers. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with these people because I've, I've known them over the years, but they're, they are very well trained 
to identify the best candidates that are out there, mm -hmm. seek them out, encourage them to apply, talk up all the great things about Oshkosh that, that we've mm -hmm. been talking about for years on this show, sure. but also to make them aware that this is a great opportunity mm -hmm. uh, to run a great city and a great organization. Mm -hmm. And then the council will seek input from the public. I, I'm sure we're going to see that type of thing. Uh, the council asset of the recruiter before they were hired and we'll seek a lot of input and then eventually, you know, bring different folks to town and the council will have selected, narrowed down that group, probably, you know, three to five, four to six, something like that, candidates where they'll interview them and, and have them meet the community and then select their next city manager mm -hmm. and if all goes well it'll start shortly after the first of the year i'm due to end on january 3rd officially mm -hmm. and so short time after that we'll have somebody and have some good continuity and that new person uh will will uh, take over the reins and and help council lead the city forward sure sure well i i believe that we will uh walk our residents through this process as it develops and we'll update everybody on those public input opportunities that that come forward and uh, we'll keep everybody updated as as it moves along so yeah all right well I, you know speaking of Oshkosh being a great place uh, there's some very clear evidence that's been all over the news lately about that and the Oshkosh has the hottest real estate market in the country at this point uh, or at least in July yeah, well, it sounds like they do this snapshot, you know, uh, like once a month and everything. And we've been moving up that list. Uh, we've been in the top 20 for about a year now. But what they mean by this is the, the hottest or highest housing market is that it's the least number of days that a house is on the market. And right now, the average time a house is on the market in Oshkosh is about 18 days. So I view this as somewhat of a mixed blessing. Certainly it gets us to the top of a list, mm. but what it says is it the houses are selling very quickly, mm. which means there's a high demand for houses and a low supply. That's oversimplifying it. But um, why is that the case? I think it's a combination of factors. One, we've always uh, been able to boast that we have very reasonable housing rates. And even though values have gone up recently, I think we still represent a good value compared to other areas of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, if you look at this list, uh, there's some other uh, places on that list that have even lower values than us, others that have higher values. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily about the, the price of the property, it's about how hot the market is. Mm -hmm. But I think this goes to what we've been talking about in recent years, and one of the council's most recent areas of emphasis is we need to increase our housing stock because the reason the house is turned over so quickly is they're not turned over as they're not turned over as quickly because there aren't a lot of them and i would also say when you think about the fact that our uh, our interest rates with them being higher compared to what we've said had recently mm -hmm. uh, that has slowed people down from putting their house on the market because they don't necessarily want to move up uh, in housing because if they move up then they're going to have to get a new mortgage that might be interest rates that are actually double what they're currently paying. Well nobody wants to do that so I think that has slowed down people looking to move up. Mm -hmm. Now as interest rates start to restabilize I think you'll see people saying all right I'm going to I'm, I'm going to dip my toe back in this pool and maybe and maybe start selling mm -hmm. and once they start selling that'll start moving things as well but mm -hmm. even people on the higher end of the market aren't necessarily moving they're happy where they're at mm -hmm. now with that all said there's still we're still a great place to live and mm -hmm. I think this speaks to all of Northeast Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we kind of joke with the, with our neighbors, you know, oh, you made the top of this list, you made the top of that list. Mm -hmm. We were recently cited as the best place for college graduates too. That's right. So it's like, so there's lots of things we can say we're at the top of the list, but Northeast Wisconsin is on that list for a lot of reasons. And I think it's because the general area is very good and it's still reasonably reasonably priced mm -hmm. and we only showed the top 10 top 20 had a couple more communities in the uh, northeast wisconsin region so unfortunately the se the secret's out mm -hmm. that we're a great place to live and housing is one of those indicators so you know i'm excited to uh to brag about it but you know it comes with uh, a little balancing act as well 
Okay, sure. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks for that explanation. And one of the reasons why Oshkosh is a great place to live is because we take care of our infrastructure. And we have a lot of projects going on around the city, uh, including over at uh, Cherry Street. Yeah, we've got quite a number of projects going on. Mm -hmm. Cherry and Prospect are one of the areas just immediately north of the university. We're working on sewer and water, their laterals, as well as storm sewer. So uh, you can see that this is still well underway. Uh, paving's not scheduled until late September, early October on that one. So this is still a work in progress. Uh, meanwhile, Grand Street is pretty similar to this. Uh, we've got uh, finishing utilities actually this week. And the crews will be grading and paving in about three to four weeks. So you see this is still a work in progress and whatnot. So, um, but we do have other progress that we're happy to talk about. And Wagyu Avenue is one of those. And uh, they were just finishing up landscaping this week. It, final pavement stripings in the next one, in, one to two weeks. But some of these areas are already done. In fact, uh, Wagyu is currently fully open between North Main Street and Broad Street. So basically the railroad tracks. It looks wonderful. You, you might see a little bit of landscaping going on, but you can still drive it. So mm -hmm. you can drive all the way up to the tracks. East of the tracks, it's it not, not quite ready, but we're getting there. I think it'll be in the next one to two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, and then let's flip to the south side. The big square that we've been talking about mm -hmm. is 5th to 7th, Iowa to Michigan. Um, for the folks, I know the fifth, folks on 5th are very happy because 5th Avenue is done. Uh, meanwhile, in Iowa, we're working on the grading and the pavement. That's coming in the next week or two, mm -hmm. making pretty good progress on that. Similarly, um, Michigan's a little more ahead. The grading's done, pavement in the next week or two. So you'll probably see Michigan get done with the paving while they're finishing the grading in Iowa, and then they'll flip over to Iowa. And then um, West 7th is the slowest one because that's the large storm box culvert. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be put in next week. Once that's done, then you cap it, you grade it and all that stuff. So it's working real well. Mm -hmm. And then meanwhile, uh, East 7th Avenue, uh, the utilities are done and the paving is going to take, take place later uh, the current week we're in or early next week. So you know, literally by the end of August, uh, you should see East 7th. Uh, done as well. And that's that's all part of that um, uh, T-Wall development uh, that's mm -hmm. right over there. And this is part of that project as well. So a lot of great progress on streets that we're happy about. And uh, we'll, we'll keep uh, going through the construction season mm -hmm. uh, with hopefully good weather to get our projects done on time. Sure, absolutely. And we'll, we'll have recaps on these uh, in upcoming episodes of City Manager's Report to keep an eye on the progress of, of where we're at. All right, and then also, Mark, uh, we've we've talked before about Go Transit, and uh, they they've been working on a needs assessment, and their uh, uh, project is complete as far as their report. Yeah, we talk a lot about the the bus part of Go Transit, but mm -hmm. all the back room, you know, where the the buses are maintained and and stored and uh, whatnot, that's all very old. There's a long history to that. Mm -hmm. Their administrative and maintenance facility was done for the Oshkosh Municipal Incinerator mm -hmm. back in 1968. Uh, when we took over the bus system, that became our, uh, that incinerator became our bus uh, area. So we've had a, a administration and garage facility needs assessment. Now it's available for everybody to view, but basically it's demonstrating that an old incinerator isn't exactly the best place to have uh, a transit system uh, housed. Mm -hmm. um, so it's inadequate to meet the current needs and there's no room for growth. Uh, in addition to the transit uh, folks there, we also have our uh, the rest of our transportation department, street signs, street lighting, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. we're pretty cramped over there. So um, we think that we'll be able to use this study as a basis for future grants. We can get federal grants for the transit side of things. So I think you'll see that uh, uh, in the next few years we'll be looking for grant opportunities because we don't really have the money right now to mm -hmm. get something like this done, but you need the study done before you move on. Well, it's important to know where we're at and this study allows us to do that. So, yeah. so uh, 
That's good. And then is continuing uh, talking about our uh, infrastructure and facilities and maintenance, uh, the Oshkosh Public Museum has been working really since the spring uh, to maintain their, their building and, and uh, different aspects of their facility. We sure have. And, you know, it's not done uh, purposely on your 100th anniversary, but mm -hmm. the timing being what it was, we're celebrating our centennial this year at the Oshkosh Public Museum, but a lot of work's going on. We've got some exterior masonry work on the Sawyer Homes chimneys and gables and though those have been com uh, completed and we've been working with the State Historic Preservation Office on that. Mm -hmm. um, if you see some of this video is a little dated because this was when work was really kind of at its peak. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some damaged limestone that's going to be restored on the historic veranda and where the, um, the, the Sawyer Home where the museum is located is the last remaining publicly accessible original commission yeah. of interior design by the prestigious Tiffany Studios Worldwide. It's remarkable. Our windows are awesome. Yes. And so if you, uh, you know, if you are interested in Tiffany glass or anything like that, you ought to come to the museum just for that. If you've never been in there, it's a, it's it's fantastic. So, yeah. I'll do that little commercial, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know you can see some of those things. Uh, if you go over there, even with the work going on, you'll be able to see it because a lot of the glass is inside and it really looks cool. Oh, it sure does. And they've been having a lot of activities over at the Public Museum to celebrate their centennial year. Uh, it, it's a great time to check them out. And speaking of activities, uh, the final Food Truck Friday was held uh, over at South Park over on uh, August 9th. Yeah, and, and I, that was great. Uh, it was filled with literally thousands of people enjoying we have 20 food truck vendors. Look at the look at the crowds there and everything. Mm -hmm. This was uh, Food Truck Friday is really a fundraiser for the Oshkosh Senior Center, mm -hmm. and it's hosted by the friends of the Oshkosh Senior Center. And we're happy to have uh, Network Health uh, be our premier sponsor for this. Mm -hmm. uh, friends of the Senior Center have contributed over seventy thousand annually to the Senior Center, and part of their fundraising activity is this Food Truck Friday. So mm -hmm. we thank everybody for their you know for coming and helping support that because some of the proceeds from the food trucks go to uh, Friends of the Senior Center which is part of that $70,000. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know if you want to help support Friends of OSC as it's called there's many ways to do so uh, just check out our website and you can learn more about it. Sure and we still have some late summer events that are coming up. The Oshkosh Parks Department has their Brews on the Bay coming up pretty soon. Yeah our next one is Wednesday September 4th mm -hmm. and, and that's food trucks local craft beer and on September 4th we're going to have music by uh, ENC Home and the Night Thieves uh, that play takes place this year at Rainbow Memorial Park mm -hmm. um, and so that's one of our activities and some other stuff going on. Snooze in the Zoo is September 7th and 8th. Uh, you get to camp out in the Menominee Park Zoo with your family. It's $20 a camper but that includes crafts, family fun, dinner, and breakfast. But you got to bring your own tents and gear. Mm -hmm. That's part of it. The, the animals don't don't carry sleeping bags. That's so, right. uh, But more details, check out the Parks Department Facebook page on that. And then uh, lastly, save the date for the Oshkosh's first Ukulele Festival on Saturday, September 28th at the Senior Center. Mm -hmm. Ukuleles have just taken off in popularity and uh, we're excited to be doing that. Sure. Yeah, looking forward to that. That'll be a unique event for sure. And we also just wanted to remind folks that we have some service changes uh, for hours uh, for Labor Day. Uh, garbage and recycling collection will not take place on Monday, September 2nd, but will be pushed back uh, one day that week. So uh, Friday collection from September 6th moves to, moves to Saturday, September 7th. Uh, other places, uh, yard waste drop-off site will be closed and will reopen on Tuesday, September 3rd. Uh, Go Transit will not have service on September 2nd. And then also City Hall, Public Library, and the Public Museum will all be closed on September 2nd. All right. Well, Mark, I think we'll just transition right into our discussion of the upcoming Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. And again, that meeting is coming up on Tuesday, August 27th at City Hall at 6 p.m. And we have a number of things. There's a, a workshop uh, that will take place uh, taking a look at uh, the possible need for a fourth ambulance un unit. Well, this is something that was done as part of what's called the Community Risk Assessment for the Fire Department. Mm -hmm. And they're concerned that the amount of time that our folks are, are out doing existing calls is not 
making enough units available in case a subsequent emergency happens. So, mm -hmm. uh, and this also impacts our contract. We provide uh, emergency medical services or EMS services to a lot of the surrounding townships, cities, and villages. So um, mm -hmm. we have to take a look at the demand on that. Um, and so we want to make sure that we take care of, the, uh, look at those things. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a fiscal responsibility because uh, a new ambulance unit to staff cost a million dollars to say nothing of the ambulance unit itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, we just want to make sure council understands uh, some of the uh, factors that are going on with this and how it may impact service in the future. Mm -hmm. And recently there may have been some some updates there too. Yeah, I mean, we, unfortunately, one of the things we did to free up our folks is we uh, are no longer doing uh, transfers from hospital to hospital. We were doing that, but mm -hmm. again, it was taking our folks out of town, which is putting a which is limiting their availability for for calls when we have emergencies that we need to take care of. Mm -hmm. So that was something that we uh, pointed out. So we're going to be talking about those factors as well. Okay, and then there are a couple of presentations, one of which is about the parking policy analysis. And this deals with street parking, parking lots, uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, and uh, you know, the Transportation Committee uh, has gone through this. Uh, the report was shared with them, the analysis. And one of the things they said was, you know, we still think we, you need some community survey on this and get, get people's opinions because there are a couple things. One is, what are the regulations in our parking lots? And then what are our regulations on the streets? We mm -hmm. currently prohibit parking from 2 to 5 a.m. There are some exceptions in like the university area and whatnot. Um, but the Transportation Committee, from their opinion, we don't, uh, they don't think that we need to make any changes to our policies. Mm -hmm. But there have been people that are asking, well, why don't we do this or that? Mm -hmm. And uh, we made some recent changes to some of our parking policies uh, and we, we increased enforcement and I think there have been some reactions to that. I think the committee's like, let's let those, you know, let's let those be in place for like a year before we evaluate those. Then there's also the 2 to 5 a.m. parking. And I think the committee was a little taken aback because they haven't heard that, that input. So they mm -hmm. would like to recommend to the council that maybe we survey the community and get their opinion. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of pros and cons and there's operational challenges that that presents as well because uh, you know, we need to clean the streets and part of cleaning the streets is making sure there aren't cars there blocking it and that can have an impact. So mm -hmm. you're going to see more about that in the near future. It will inform if there is a survey and how to find that, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. Under new ordinances, uh, we have an issue, uh, an item relating to municipal code uh, and, and uh, adjusting that relating to fireworks. Well, there was a discussion at the previous council meeting and the council, I think, uh, wants us to make a strong statement. So they've directed staff to uh, propose a significant increase in fines. Uh, they gave us direction on putting in an ordinance with a fine for $1,000. Um, so that's what we're presenting to council to consider. The staff did also recognize that we have had a secondary, a lower uh, fine for juvenile offenses. So we're going to at least point that out to the council and see what they want to do with it. So that's kind of where we're at. Okay, all right. And then we're also looking at a zone change approval, and this is for the area at uh, the uh, uh, former Washington School site over on the east side of the city. Right. Uh, the city and Habitat for Humanity are in the process of purchasing this property from the school district, uh, but part of that is uh, that it gets the correct zoning. So right now it's institutional because the school was there. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're proposing some housing uh development and it would be try to get the lots to be comparable in size to uh, other areas. So we've identified about 19 residential lots that will work with Habitat for Humanity on developing. So part of the process is to have it rezoned to single family residential and the council will be taking final action on the rezoning at this meeting. Okay, and then under our new resolutions, we have a potential amendment to free, uh, fees and charges, and this relates to the recreational burning permit fee. Yeah, this is a, a little bit the opposite of what we had a discussion about earlier about raising a fine. In mm -hmm. this case, this is about lowering or actually eliminating a fee. Mm -hmm. We had talked about eliminating the need for a fire permit, a, a burning permit, but mm -hmm. one of the things that was pointed out was that then we lose the opportunity to educate somebody on how to properly 
address that. And I think the council was like, well, we're okay about the education part, but philosophically, there are some folks who feel that we shouldn't be charging for that, that that should be free or something, you know, something along those lines. So now we've brought back just a resolution to lower uh, the fee to zero. So it would essentially be free. Maybe it'll encourage more people to do it, to get the education because it won't be any charge. Mm -hmm. And we will see what happens with that. All right. And then we also have an item uh, approval of the 2025 to 2034 capital improvement plan. And I know in the past these were five year uh, plans and it looks like this is about a 10 year plan. Yeah, you're right. One of the things we discovered that as we, as we try to make ourselves avail ourselves to grants that might be available uh, and the bipartisan infrastructure law that the feds did a couple of years ago mm -hmm. were like, well, we'd like to know what project you have. Well, when you're only limited in a five-year window, you don't have as many projects and sometimes the requirements for these grants can vary. So if we do a 10-year view of things, we have more options uh, to, to find the best project to qualify for a grant. I'm sure somebody will say, well, my project's important. And it may be to you personally, but it may not necessarily meet the criteria that the feds are looking for. So we widen that. Now we do a 10-year capital improvement plan. It also helps us with debt planning and things like that. So we've done that and we're very happy that we're able to do that. But um, we have good data on, uh, on our capital projects. I asked departments to give me a 10-year view, so we're sharing it with the council. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we have a, what's called the CIP, Capital Improvement Plan Dashboard, that you can take a look at all of these different projects. And uh, we can't even do justice to it on this show, but you can identify what projects are gonna be taking place in subsequent years. Uh, mm -hmm. If you think a street needs uh, fixing, chances are very, very good. You're gonna see it somewhere in this 10 year plan. Sure. So if you are curious, I ask people to be patient because you know we've got a, we've got a plan. We can't do every project uh, and there are a lot of projects that need doing. We can't do everything in one year and we have to, we have to you know, do it over a period of time. And the 10 year plan gives you an opportunity to take a look at it and see if you've got a, a favorite treat you think needs doing, look for it and it's probably on that list. It's a very comprehensive uh, site, so I encourage folks to check it out and uh, explore a little bit. All right, then we also have an approval of Tax Incremental District number 44, and this is over on the nor northwest side of Oshkosh. Right, staff did a, a presentation to council. This is actually being initiated by staff. Um, we've done a lot of redevelopment tax increment districts, but we have never done what's called a mixed use. Uh, TIF, a tax increment district. And what mixed use is, is, is what the name says. It's a combination of industrial, commercial, and residential. There are no residential specific TIFs allowed. We can do them on a redevelopment. We've done plenty of those. Um, but for, uh, for new housing development, uh, it has to be done in concert with industrial and commercial in a mixed use TIF. So you see the boundaries there that are in black, but you see surrounding that even outside of the district are areas that we've planned for residential. Mm -hmm. So we've minimized the amount of residential in the mixed use TIF because we can't, we can't be, have any more than 35% of residential. So we've been very creative in how we draw the district boundaries, but we can do work within a half mile mm -hmm. of the boundary of a district. So we're creating opportunities to do utility improvements that will help benefit residential development. And that's something that council wants us to see do more of mm -hmm. because we want to make it more affordable. Mm -hmm. So this is our way of, uh, of doing that so we can uh, to do that. You're going to hear more about this, but this is sort of the, uh, the basic general idea of what we're trying to do there. Okay, and we talked about that a little bit earlier. And just wanted to remind folks also that we have a budget workshop meeting coming up on August 28th as well. Uh, and so we're, we're deep into budget season, or we will be very soon. Yeah, and that'll be on Wednesday, uh, the day after the council meeting. Okay, very good. Well, Mark, we deep breath. We got through a lot today. So thank you very much for your insights, and we appreciate it. It's always a pleasure. 
All right, and thank you for joining us today. We appreciate that you uh, took the time to join us. Again, that Common Council meeting is coming up at 6 p.m. this Tuesday, August 27th at City Hall, which is at 215 Church Avenue. You can watch that meeting live on GovTV, Spectrum Channel 10, UVerse Channel 99, and streaming on YouTube and OshkoshMedia.org. Or you can listen on the radio, Oshkosh FM 101.9, which is also online, and on the TuneIn Radio app for phones and tablets. Tablets. Or you can use your favorite streaming device, including Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV. Just search for the Oshkosh Media app and you can stream the meetings there. You can always visit Oshkosh Media's YouTube channel for the full library of programming. So join us again in two weeks for another City Manager's Report. Thanks for watching.